All right, happy Friday, everybody. And speaking of Friday, it's my birthday today. And I'm not going to tell you how old I am. Actually, today I turned 60. But I just wanted to touch base. I know, I don't look it. I don't feel it. I just want to touch base a little bit. Do a short video. Regarding that the build, on the build that I'm going to be doing. The MSI build. And this is going to be the video card that goes in that build. This is the MSI Gaming X Trio 3070. I am hoping to be able to get the MSI Gaming Trio 3080 to put in that build. If I do get my hands on it, that's what's going to go in it. But on other news, I just got notified by UPS. And believe it or not, check this out. Let me get rid of this. That's stupid. Um, I uh, don't know how it happened, but I won the lottery on um, on Newegg three times this week. First, I won a 59.50, which probably um, very could likely be going in that build. I, I may go with the 59 not to 59.50 because of the price it's really expensive and i got it at msrp what it was originally advertised for on two on wednesday i i won the uh, asus tough yes the asus tough 3090 that's on its way here right now it's the next town over it's on, on the ups truck i am going to do an unboxing and a video on that I will do a kind of, I will do something on it as far as like a benchmark, but it's just going to be my own type of benchmarks that I'm going to be giving out because there's so many videos out benchmarking the card. It's, it's literally wearing out YouTube. Um, and last night, as freaky as this may sound, I hit it again. Got the thing from Newegg, and I couldn't believe it. The card I'd been wanting, for me, actually, is the Asus Strix 3080 OC. I, I, I couldn't believe it. It came in a bundle. It also came with a Strix um, motherboard, which I'm going to be selling along with all my other stuff. So that's going to be going in. So I will be doing unboxing on that. Again, a sort of type of overclocking, overview, um, benchmark type thing, give you a little bit of information, and um, more or less I'm just going to be doing a deep dive into the card, and we're going to be talking about the features of it, because again, there's so many videos out there, oh my god, there's so much stuff on YouTube where the people are comparing benchmarks that have been doing this for years. So I know you ASUS fans that really did a great job coming to my channel. I appreciate it. That Strix video hit the nail right on the head. I can see what people are liking. It gives me good direction on where I need to be going and what I need to be focusing on for my videos in the future. So, I really appreciate it. I hope you all give me a thumbs up. If you like the video, it really helps the channel out. And if you want, give me a thumbs up even if you don't like it. Help a, help a brother out, man. What the heck? Anyways, I'm going to get on to editing the rest of the uh, video of the, um, the unboxing and the kind of overview of the... Um, the water cooler. It's the MSI 360R. Um, you'll see it in a minute. So on that note, we'll be seeing you all later. Actually in a couple minutes. Be back. Alrighty, I'm back. Okay. So basically what I was talking about before is I am going to be doing an MSI build. It's a 
think they call it the i100 case it's under a hundred dollars not a very expensive case but it's has great airflow got good reviews has a uh, glass side not plexiglass it's glass on, on the uh, outer side and um, it's got a really nice design to the front of it they have them on Newegg they have them on Amazon they also have a couple other ones that are quite a bit more money but I really don't see the advantage to them as far as uh, what they do um, one of them actually is basically almost a hundred dollars more than the case that I'm looking at and my goodness it, it almost looks identical so anyways what I'm gonna be using for a cooler oh by the way I entered the uh, new egg shuffle and I'll be doing a review on it next week I I won a, a uh, I can't believe it. I want to um, it's my fourth time I've won on it it's a uh, this time I got a um, an Asus tough 3090 Wow they're a lot of money I I'm looking at the, the, the game between the 3080 in the 3090 and the 3090s offering not even getting into the overclock and stuff probably a 10 maybe a 12 percent increase for over eleven hundred dollars so if you're not into graphic designs and really high-end stuff i don't really see the need for a 3090 myself the one i'm getting i'm just going to sell i'm would rather keep my 3070 in there I benchmarked it it does everything I need it to do um, I don't do 4k gaming I haven't yet I usually stick with just the 1440 and that works fine for me but the 3080 will handle anything you can throw at it for half of the price so that's definitely definitely the way to go if you're looking for gaming um, this 3070 in here so far for me works beauty love it so what we have here the MSI they call it call call it I guess it's core liquid 360R they do make a version of it where the the water block and you're gonna see why I'm going to say water block it's not a pump the water block in here the water block itself is square Asus makes one similar to it and inside of it as far as I know on the Asus it does have like a small fan which blows air down because of the size of it it need it's covering your VRAM so you need something blowing air down it's got a little windy fan in there so I kind of like this style better because it's easier to get air to everything without oh the other thing about the uh, the big block one is you can put your own little LED video on it I don't know I seen a few different things okay first thing we're gonna look at is the fans it does come the, the box does come wrapped in plastic and I already took that off so the fans they come with the gaming logo the dragon nine blades definitely ball barren well wow, they're really they're pretty sturdy I'd say they're definitely a good mid-range fan I seen the Lee and Lee ones I have a Lee and Lee water cooler I love the thing but they've got those fans there they're, they're insane like hundred and twenty dollars for three of them no I don't think so not when you can go to um, cooler master and you can get the two-in-one three-in-one that do the same thing for forty fifty dollars okay so it's it's basically a typical nine blade fan with ARGB light lighting in it 
ball bearing. Seems to be very well built. More of an older school, I would say, angle on these blades, static pressure. Nothing advanced about it, but it will definitely push and pull air with no problem. What I did notice that was cool is that I've seen some companies like Lee and Lee, they make a propri proprietary, I always blah, 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 on that word, proprietary um, plugs. I didn't like them. It's, I, I just don't get it. Why don't you make standard plugs? Like, see the, the, the four pin power plug on here. It, it, it's standard. It'll fit right on any motherboard with no problem. With the Lee and Lee, it's got this kind of flat, long five pin one that you have to put on. You connect everything to it and then it converts down into one of these. Why just not skip it and do what they did and just put a three into one adapter, which makes it pretty neat. So yeah, that. You have your three pin five volt ARGB and another one on this side with the prongs on it depending on which way you want to go how you're going to hook it basically you can run one into another and i'm sure you guys have all done that if you've done any all in one water cooling i know in the package it comes with a tube of thermal grease which looks to be pretty decent stuff not bad it has four brackets in there and it does you can you can use this on a thread ripper but I wouldn't recommend it because it will not cover the whole thread ripper it, you're gonna have your four corners of your CPU sticking out and the corner heat is definitely going to spike it's gonna cause a little bit of wear it's gonna probably mess up the um, the copper plate as well eventually it has the old style I'm surprised they still put these on here these old style adapters but maybe they do it because some people may still have older power supplies they're using so and it comes with the standoffs so it takes all it takes four different um CPU it takes um, the thread ripper it handles all of the AM4 and it handles all the LGA 1151 1200 and so on so it pretty much covers all the bases as far as that goes now we'll just get on to the this part right here which was really interesting because this is something you don't see every day on a lot of the um, the water coolers don't mind me making all this noise okay so with this one first thing we're going to talk about is the water block ARGB you have your dragon on the top and what I do like about it is this turns you can see where it has the dots and it tells you which way you can turn it so you can adjust it no matter whether you mount it on the top or the bottom and I would definitely I, I did a front mount I could have done a, a top mount and the reason for that if you're going to have it for a long time a fan that is like this vertical no vertical horizontal yeah okay laying flat pushing down or blowing up one way or the other 
the bearings are going to last a lot longer because you're putting even pressure all the way around where the pin goes through when you're running when you're running any fans that would be considered I guess that would be um, upright the pins gonna put pressure on the lower part of the bearings I don't know how this would work with like liquid hydraulic or something like that but I know with ball bearings and eventually that pin the weight even though it's not a lot over time it's gonna cause a bit of wear and that's where you're gonna get your wobble and you're gonna lose some sooner or later they're gonna get dust in them get dirty slow down make noise and crap the bed but back to this so it has a really as you can see the quality of the water block is outstanding the machinery on it is some of the best I think I've ever seen great great machinery and this is what I was talking about you have the only plug coming from this is the ARGB nothing else there is no pump inside of this no pump at all because this 360 again you have your regular this one's a three pin but it still fits on any standard 12 volt four pin has the pump built right inside of the radiator and basically what they did is they took what was in the water block redesigned it so this again isn't the standard old school um branded one that for years that companies basically had to follow until the patent was finally released and people could start designing their own but um from what i understand it gives better circulation through the uh through the lines and makes for better better cooling better circulation And I guess you want to see this right here. That's what holding the pump in. It's a 27 millimeter thick, so it's a little bit thicker than the standard ones. It has a. Now nah, I'm going to leave it on, but you can pull this off. There is a drain plug. So if you want to clean it out, flush it, and refill it with distilled water remember that do not ever ever put regular water in here it has to be distilled distilled water is is anti-static you can basically throw it right on your board I wouldn't recommend it but you won't shot things out people use the distilled water and then they put some type of coloring and stuff in it to give it its different colors in the um, the custom water cooled systems so the hoses they're nice they're a little stiff they've got a braided look to them nylon the fittings on them are very clean I think they did a good job we'll have to see how it's gonna cool it's got a little blacked out logo on the side the MSI logo so we're going to have to see if it's going to cool. I heard it maybe maybe cools a degree because of the, the design of the, uh, the, the pump. Um, it does give you about a degree or two. People might not think that's a lot, but remember, it's always that one degree that you go over that causes your system to smash, crash, burn. Okay. So... Just down to the specifications real quick we have it, it's a number of fans is three the dimensions they're all 120s by 25 
the fan speed it varies between 500 at idle and 2000 at max fan power conception conception <laughs> consumption 1.8 watts fan rated fan rated current 0 0.5 amps 15 amps fan rated voltage 12 volt of course bearings ball bearing um, fan pressure air so it can basically move 0 0.3 to 2.39 da, 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 whatever they want to call that HTO noise level at idle it would be 14.3 decibels all the way up to 34.3 so with a cover on the side of your case or a glass you're not going to really hear much the, the fans are quite quiet um, the airflow is 21 CFMs per fan up to 78.73 again it's all ARGB power mode yes um, cable length you know you want to get all into this 21.65 inches by 13 blah 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 I don't think anybody's gonna worry about that there's enough for pretty much anything um, radiated dimensions 394 by 120 wide by 27 so I did, did I say 28 or 27 so it's 27 so it's still a couple millimeters thicker than what you get with a lot of them even this Leanne Lee I think is 25 I'm not sure I can't remember it's been a it's been a little bit since I've I put that in um, the block is 5 volt always remember 5 volt 5 volt 3 pin 5 volt 4 pin 12 volt you stick a 5 volt header onto a 12 volt motherboard header you are going to fry whatever you plug into it it's going to be dead take my word for it I've done it yes I, I've done it one time one time okay fan a pump speed 4200 rpms that is not shabby okay pump power consumption 4.08 watts it takes LGA 1150 1151 1155 1156 and 1200 it also takes LGA 1366 2011 2011 dash 3 and 2066 I think that's probably the the, the the later numbers that I just gave you are probably the um, equivalents to their thread ripper style thing okay the AMD socket AM4 FM2 FM plus 2 FM1 AM3 so it takes pretty much all of them also it says thread ripper again I wouldn't recommend it if you are not covering your whole CPU you're just asking for trouble you definitely want to have that whole CPU covered I'm looking at the data sheet and that's all pretty much the same information so again next week I will be doing a video on this Asus tough that's coming in this 3090 I'm gonna hold off I've already looked at the specs myself online and I'm gonna wait till I get it this one is gonna be benchmarked I don't expect to see it do much <laughs> I don't see it do, it's really it's probably gonna be up there it's gonna be under the Strix Strix is, is up there the 3090 gaming trio that's probably right under the the Strix. The Tough is right close to the um, Game and Trio. The Zotac again, that's another one that's right up there. And the EVGAs are really good performers. The FTW three. I had a actually that's what this is this one right here this 3090 is an EC XC3 EC3 XC3 um, 
the one coming, like I said, is a tough. And uh, yeah, that's that's about all I really wanted to talk about as far as this goes. So I'm just kind of doing an update on some of the things that are going to be going into this build. Again, I appreciate everybody coming over and checking the channel out. If you could please give me a thumbs up, it really helps me out with the channel to keep it going and growing. Um, as the future goes on, I, I, I am definitely, as I said before, I've, I've got some really, really good equipment that's going to be coming in. And um, I'm looking forward to doing, doing the benchmarks on, on this Tough. It's the first one that I've really messed around with. Again, it's going to be more fun because I know what to expect already. And oh, by the way, if anybody's curious of who does make the most powerful 3090 out there, so far, everything I've read and seen and watched on Linus and Jay, it's that palette. That one is up there. It, it, it blows the Strix, the Tough, it, all of them out of the water in what it pushes for um, power. It, it's, it's really, really high. Um, again, maybe it's 15 instead of 12% above the 3080. But again, like I said, if I was buying it for me, no, I wouldn't buy it. Buy it to sell it? Sure. I mean, it's just part of selling things. That's what I do. Um, the 3080 by far only being 10 to 12 percent slower by frame rate than the 3090 is absolutely the best thing that you can get the only game that you probably won't be able to put that on is cyberpunk 2077 at ultra in 4k gaming and I think that's due to, of the drivers and maybe and, and more than likely the game isn't configured well enough to handle that kind of frame rate. It, it, it has it, but it does cause some problems. So again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And we'll be talking soon. As I can get that other card, I'll do an unboxing. I will do a up close benchmark using 3d mark which consists of firestorm port royale it comes you can do the 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 um 4k testing on that you can do the 1080 you can do the 1440 you can do the virtual reality testing this 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 thing really covers a lot i also have that superposition in heaven but i'd still prefer when it comes to benchmarking for um video cards i like the 3d mark they do make some free versions it's 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 cool to go over download it check it out they're really nice programs but if you want to get into all the 4K and the higher end stuff, the advanced, you have to pretty much purchase it. And it wasn't, I didn't find it to be too expensive. So on that note, everybody stay safe. Be seeing you real soon. Looking forward to it. Peace and may the force be with you.